So if you clicked on this video, you're probably thinking planetary imaging is very difficult, but actually in all reality, it's not your fault. Planetary imaging is very hard, not because of the skills. You might have very good skills of planetary imaging and still get bad images. And it's not actually to do with your skills. It's to do with luck. And when I say luck, it has to do with seeing. Seeing is very important in astrophotography, especially in planetary imaging, because of the turbulence in the atmosphere, especially because we're very zoomed into planets. The seeing will completely like wash out the planet. And you know, kind of like when you're driving on a hot day, um, you'll see on the roads, there's a bunch of turbulence and it's kind of wavy and kind of blurry. That's actually a similar effect to seeing. As a matter of fact, good seeing is only usually one in 50, meaning like one night out of all the 50 nights that are clear, only one night is excellent seeing. So technically, if you have a really good seeing night, um, that's actually something you should take advantage of or just image multiple nights. So if you wanna actually get good seeing consistently, I recommend going to like a high altitude location, like a mountain, or where Damon Peach lives, like Canary Islands. Um, he actually gets some amazing um, images of Jupiter. If you've seen his work, it's just absolutely incredible. I definitely recommend checking him out. He's pretty, he's pretty good at planetary imaging. He's like one of the best out there. Um, anyway. But planetary imaging is very, very difficult if you have bad seeing. If you really wanna get good planetary images in bad seeing, if you absolutely have to do a bad seeing, um, you can take tons of frames to, so you can stack the best frames there are in your data set, like take maybe 300,000 frames, and then you could stack just the top 5%. And that would actually do really well, just make sure your planetary images aren't rotating uh, extremely a lot. So like Saturn would do well from that, but Jupiter, you just have to go like take individual files and then go through them and see which ones have the best seeing. But also you don't have to have a giant telescope like Damon Peach has like a C14 to get amazing images. You actually only need really an eight inch. And because I got this image of Jupiter right here, that is from good seeing, this is pretty good seeing, with an eight inch telescope. And this has to do with seeing only in collimation and focus. But I'm trying to say like, you don't need a huge telescope to get that kind of image in really expensive gear. You can get it with as long as the conditions are correct. Um, now, in order to get good seeing, I would use an app like Astrospheric to make sure like you can see like when the good seeing is going to occur, like what hours, that is a very good app to use. But if it isn't seeing, like if your planet is shifted, it could be due to collimation. And this is another big thing. I know I talk about the collimation a lot, I know, but if you don't have your telescope collimation, it's not gonna look good. That's just a pointer. I'm not gonna go into that in depth because I've already gone into that in other videos, but collimation is important. Make sure you got focus, collimation, everything important. That's, you know, checked off your list. But a big aperture telescope can make a difference. It really just depends on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to get more details or are you trying to get higher resolution? If your answer was you're trying to get more details, well, more details actually doesn't require a bigger telescope. It just requires better scene. But if you're trying to get more resolution, well, your camera, in your telescope combination likely won't be able to achieve that if it's a small aperture, mainly due to the amount of light your telescope collects. Even if you wanted to use a bar lens, it'd actually make it worse because you're losing a lot of light doing that. So you're not getting as good results anyway. So you have to, you know, lower the resolution anyway in post. So I definitely recommend if you're trying to um, get more resolution out of your images, that's when you need to upgrade. And if you're really trying to achieve more resolution, I definitely recommend getting a scope like a Celestron C11 because a Celestron C11, they're very good scopes. They're very well balanced. You don't necessarily have to like have a super, super big mount and like kind of like the sweet spot. Like you still have a lot of light gathering capabilities. Um, but yes, you don't have to have a ginormous mount. You have to have a good mount like an EQ6R Pro, maybe a little bit better. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have, you know, amazing mount like, you know, the EQ8R Pro. That one's a little bit too much. I couldn't handle that one. But the, the Celestron C11 is still a very good telescope. But yes, you're definitely not a bad astrophotographer if you're getting an image like this. It has nothing to do with that. It has way more to do with the luck in planetary imaging. It's not hard because you're badly skilled. It's because it's hard because the the luck of it. So you can't really get good seeing every night. So you're gonna have to wait and be patient or use an app like Astrospheric, as I mentioned. Um, they're not very, very accurate though. I would just be careful. Um, but definitely, if you wanna get great images, just wait for a good seeing night or just image a ton, like as many as, po as, many frames as possible. So that's pretty much why it's hard to do astrophotography in terms of planetary is just because the luck. Oh, and if you like my Jupiter image, you can check out more of my work in the link in the description below to my Etsy shop. Oh, and by the way, my name is Asher. I run this channel here at Astrophotography Quest. I make images about planetary photography primarily. I make deep sky videos, some solar videos once in a while. If you like that kind of content, make sure to subscribe. Anyways, until next time, clear skies. Hope you enjoyed this video.